Hello. Welcome back. This is the second video of this series, and it has been a while. I have just been incredibly busy with many different projects, many different things. But, you know, aside from that, I've always had this series in the back of my mind. So this is going to be the second video going into TypeScript and design patterns. And I wanted to go deeper and look at one specific pattern I think is super useful. And it's the observer pattern. This pattern is going to be a little bit interesting because I feel like this pattern is super applicable for many different contexts or applications. So hopefully you guys can get some education, you can learn something new, and then maybe I can help you out in understanding its use and this pattern. So hope you guys enjoy. Right, so first we're going to look at this demonstrative application that I just created that's trying to emulate how we can use the observer pattern. And just so you know, we have some sort of database and server that's constantly updating getting information. And at the same time, we have something like a log class that we're going to use to kind of collect specific times that the users here below will kind of log to the database and server. What I mean specifically is we have these three, let's say users in our system and every, and they each are able to kind of log into our database or server. And we have this application specifically so that we can collect the time and the user and just have it log to all other users as well. And we have a, this log saved up here, here as well. So if we search for this specific time, we should be able to find it here as well within our database. And this also applies to the other users as well. If this user clicks on log now, it's going to have that time from here and it's going to collect their username. Same thing here. It should be this value that's located here. So it should match up for this specific purpose. Now, the observer pattern allows you to have this log class being able to, uh, every time it updates with this information, you can spread it across these users. Another nice thing about this specific application is that, you know, I'm one person logging on these different um, supposedly screens, but you can probably imagine that this application spans across multiple users and they're all using this logger or the system maybe uh, multiple times, maybe even at the same time. So let's say, um, that we had something like this, you see the number is the same. You can see technically that the user two clicked on it first, then user one, but they did click at the same time, but they both clicked at different times in the queue, which might be useful in its own way. And you have this collective log that you can go back to and check. So in a way, we're able to just be aware of any changes that are happening in the log, even though this thing is consistently changing. So we're isolating and focusing on not necessarily uh, observing on this database, but at the same time, we can add as many users as we can to this system without any sort of problem or complication. And we can at the same time maybe add more complexity to this server or this log or this database. And if this is a little bit unclear, then maybe we can just go ahead and go right to the code here. That might help explain just some things. Now, the first thing is, is that we, we have to have this subject and this observer. And a big 
key component of this pattern is understanding that they are sort of coupled together. And they are, they have a very tight relationship. As you see in the subject, the subject has to have the observer because um, it uses the observer in some sort of list to consistently update it. But at the same time, the observers themselves have this update function that's used to um, maybe for some specific purpose to update maybe their own screens or display. And the relationship between the two makes more sense if we look deeper into the code here. So I have this code for the log and the users themselves. And if we look at the log for my observer interface, I have add, remove, notify, same thing here as well, but I've also added some getters and setters here. And a big reason for us not having that within the interface itself is we, we don't really have to have the classes force them to instantiate or create those methods for specific getters or setters because we we are not really quite sure ourselves what those specific getters or setters are but we are aware that there has to be some some observer that we're trying to update or notify of these changes within this specific subject and that's why you have this notify function as well so without getting too much into um, the pattern itself, because I think it's a good pattern to kind of read up on and learn a little bit more of, the big key thing you can observe here is that we have a list of observers that we're just adding removing. And this notify function is just calling the update on each of those observers. I have this uh, string array of unique times and log lists, but those variables can be anything you can think of in terms of anything that you're trying to observe in some change or something that you're trying to pay attention to that notify these observers that might change. And that's where the update comes in. And if you check the get state or set state, specifically the set state, it not only updates into the log when I have it pushed into this log list, but it also uses the notify. So at that exact moment it's changed, it will also call this update into all of these observers within the list. So looking at the observers here, which we use in this as users, we just, we have them have the specific logger here it doesn't have to be log it could be subject i just specifically called it log mostly because i kind of did this haphazardly but we want to code more towards the abstraction not towards the classes themselves because that way if we had different classes that implemented these subject and observers we're able to add more and more classes with different functions and variables without altering or affecting the way the code runs. So it's always better to kind of code towards that abstraction rather than code towards the concretion, which is something I, you know, neglected to do. But I think it's important to kind of think about this update function. For this specific purpose, every time it updates, it's going to go into the log list get the value of the most recent log, and then it's going to create that log within the user log. And so through this code of this specific function, we're able to, in a way, um, create safety blocks. We're able to, in case there was multi-threading, multi-users, all quer querying into this log list or these times, we're able to specifically allocate the exact time the user clicks in without 
interfering with another user because we have locked it into this kind into this code, which is a concretion. And at the same time, we're also able to add as many observers as we wanted to to this list without affecting the code so we can scale it out. In another way, we're able to also add more different observers in a way. This is just a very simplistic application, but there could be multiple ways that we kind of code this out in a way if you check how I've done it, I have this log. I just coded this out like this. I created it, I instantiated it. But actually in your application or in your use case, it might not even be this simple. You, you can add on an observer every time a user registers to some application or to some site. You might also have it in a way have the observable or subject or whatever being observed um, have that just be a global variable and in a way you're always able to pull from that using this uh, get state or set state but at the same time it can also notify and update all the things that kind of connect to that are also observing that class or subject or observable in a way. And so the biggest thing that I've come to realize with this specific user pattern is that we're able to scale out um, the amount of observers. So there's no need to exactly concretely code for every single um, observer to collect data from a single entity. And also the biggest thing as well is that every time this updates, this data server API or whatever, we can make it also notify everything that is observing it as well. If we kind of couple uh, the observer and subjects together in this sort of relationship. So yeah, that was kind of a really brief demonstration. I say brief because this pattern is deceptively like simple. I think there's a lot of nuances and com complex things about this pattern I really didn't explain in terms of like pushing versus pulling. Um, why more specifically this pattern may be used or how it could be used I think it's a good pattern to really go deep into and try and implement yourself for maybe your own application. Um, and this pattern is kind of used, at least in Angular, they use something like an observable with uh, the subscribe method. So it's something that I th think you should probably, you know, get your hands dirty and try and practice and get more into. So I'll include links. Um, I'll include the code as well, just so if anything was a little bit unclear, maybe you guys can go into those resources and learn a little bit more about that pattern as well. So yeah, so that was it. I'm really sorry for the late video, and I will try and keep these videos coming. I can't promise anything, but hopefully maybe there'll be some other videos in the queue. So hope you guys have a nice one, and bye.